Hey, my name is Bailey Weiser. I'm the owner of Hello Jude Photography, a North Georgia newborn and family photography studio, and welcome to my channel. Today we're starting a mini series where we're gonna be diving into the details of all of my favorite editing tricks and tools and apps that I use. Um, I'm gonna walk you through why I love each of these things, how I use them, um, and how you can implement them into your editing workflow to make editing a more seamless process for you, to take away some of the questions that you might have about how to edit specific things, um, and hopefully make your editing time reduced so you can get back to doing some more things that you know you also need to do and not spend your life behind a computer screen. So let's dive in. So the first tool that we're going to dive into today is the masking tool. Now this is a tool that you can find in Lightroom. Um, I use this tool on almost every single image that I take to help enhance um, my editing after I've gone through and done my preset. And this is the back end of things where I'm making those fine tune edits and I'm tweaking things, perfecting things, adjusting colors, um, exposure, highlights, all of those things. So, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how this tool works um, and, and show you some of the images that I have taken and edited um, and how I use the tool in different situations. All right, so for this video, I am using the Adobe um, Lightroom Classic. I know some people don't use the Classic, but that's kind of what I have always stuck with. And so if your settings are a little bit different, your layout's a little bit different than mine, um, it's because you're not using Classic. So. I pulled up a gallery that I edited and delivered um, a couple weeks ago just so that I could kind of show you some of the things behind the scenes. So in order to get to the masking tool, you're going to want to go to the develop module. And once you are here, you're going to see all of these things here on the right hand side, um, your, your basic edits, tone, um, your tone curve, color mixer, all those things. What we want to worry about um, are a couple of different things. So one we have right here is our healing tool. So if you click that, that's how you get to your healing. Um, but we want to worry about masking. And so we're going to go to this circle on the far right, um, right here. You can see if you hover over it, it'll tell you your shortcut key. Um, mine is the letter, uh, okay. So if you hit the letter K, at least that's what it is on mine, this masking prompt will come up and you'll see your little brush. If you use two fingers and slide up or down on your, um, if you have a laptop keypad, um, that's how you increase the size. You can increase the feather, the flow, the density, all of those things. So this is gonna be, if you're just masking and you wanna brush mask something. So for example, say that, um, this little side of his face is darker. I'm gonna just kind of brush on a little bit and increase my exposure, whatever. Um, I'm gonna delete that because I don't really want that mask. But if you hit the letter K and you go to this plus sign right here, you can click and it'll give you a bunch of different options. So um, selecting your subject, the sky, the background, people, objects, uh, gradients, color range, all of those things. So. To start with, we're gonna do the subject. I'm gonna click on select subject and it takes a minute or so, but it will automatically detect. Um, it's pretty accurate. Now, there's some times that it gets a little bit off, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Um, I can use this to change specific things. Um, maybe I've got some weird color casting going on and I want to decrease the temperature or increase the temperature. I use this one a lot when I have babies that have a high bilirubin level and they're a little bit jaundiced, I'll pull my blue slider down just a bit. Um, it's also really good if I am um, wanting to increase the uh, exposure on just the subject, anything like that. So for this one, I'm gonna put it back where it was, but this is how you mask a subject. Um, I can select people, which is essentially the same thing, but it's going to get every single person in the picture. So I'm gonna switch pictures and go to one that has everybody in it. And as you can see, I've already got some masks going on. 
Um, but if I clicked select people, it will detect the different people in the picture. A lot of times it doesn't pick up newborn, so I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't select baby as an option, which it didn't. So I can do all people if I want to apply the same mask to everyone or just select an individual person. So for example, say that I want to um, do some teeth whitening or iris enhancing and I select all people. It's gonna give me options of what I can um, single out. So maybe it's their clothes, facial hair on dad, um, both of their hair, teeth, lips, all of those things. Um, I use the teeth one the most because I like to give my families a little bit of uh, a whiter smile, especially when I've got a white background. Um, sometimes teeth can look a little bit more yellow in the pictures. Um, another one that I use a lot is facial skin and lips. Um, sometimes if I have some mamas that come in and they don't have lip color on that stands out, I will add a little bit that way. It's the best and fastest way that I have found to do it instead of having to brush on the lips in every single picture. So in this one, I've got, uh, I applied a teeth one. What is this one? Oh yeah, so both of them have teeth enhanced in this one. That's what you're seeing. Um, all right, you can also collect, uh, hit select sky. Doesn't work so much in the studio, but if I have an outdoor session, um, like for example, I will go to the library and this is a session I posted on YouTube last week, but let's say that I want to find this picture right here. I can go to develop, hit K and select the sky and it will select just the sky. So maybe it needs to be bluer. Maybe I want it to be more warm. Like if there's a sunset I'm adjusting, maybe I want to bring some of the highlights down um, or the whites down or make the whites brighter, any of those things. That's how I would do um, the sky right there. You can also like adjust saturation, all of those things. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. Wanted to pop in really quick and share with you something really special. I have an Amazon storefront and basically what this does is it drops all of the links of the things that people ask me for, um, like my posing bean bags, my wraps, things that I use in the studio, even some wardrobe ideas for kids in the studio and it's all in one place. The great thing about this is you can shop Amazon and get prime delivery. It does not add anything to your cost, but it does help make me a little bit extra cash so that I can continue to serve um, through YouTube. So follow this link to check out my Amazon storefront. If there's anything missing on this that you would like to see or any links that you would like to have, feel free to leave them below in the comments and I'll make sure to grab a link for you so that you can keep shopping. Let's get back to our video. So again, K. Background. So this is a question I get asked a lot is how I make my backgrounds look white and crisp. A lot of times it's just itself. Um, but if I have my clients pulled away further from the wall or maybe at an angle, sometimes things look a little bit more gray. And so you can come over here and just like the background, you can increase your exposure. I will have a little caveat. Don't make it too bright because then it's just, it looks fake. It looks like they're they're floating. So if you want to increase your exposure a little bit, you can. If you want to decrease your highlights, it makes it darker or increase your highlights, um, pull down any shadows, all of those things you can do by doing the background, um, decreasing your saturation. Maybe you've got some weird color casting going on from their clothes. You can do that. Um, background is really helpful if you're wanting to just separate your subject from what's going on um, in the background. Objects is another one that you can use. Say that you've got um, something specific in the picture that you want to adjust. You can select the objects with your brush like this and it's gonna probably detect baby. Yep, so it also detected her hands, but you can select specific objects. Maybe I've got um, like a baby holding a balloon and I want to adjust that balloon or um, any, anything like that. Maybe there's a dog in the picture and I need to adjust something on the dog. I can select that. It's something that may not pop up um, on the subjects or the 
select people panels. Um, I can also do objects and kind of select just like this instead of the brush and it should detect. Obviously it's going to detect, detect everything in that square. So just be cautious when you're hitting that, what actually is being selected. Um, another option is your gradients. Um, I use these whenever I have some funky shadows going on. I don't know if I had any specifically in this session. Um, let's see. So for example, maybe right. Oh, I do. Nope. Just a background. So say that in this one, um, I wanted to pull, cause there's a window right here. Maybe I wanted to pull my exposure down just a little bit or my highlights down a little bit. I could, um, you just will drag and adjust and you can adjust how far, how close, um, how intense, all of those things with a uh, linear gradient. You can also do a radial gradient. The only time that I usually use the radial is if I am trying to increase my coloration or exposure or anything like that or dehaze on a sun coming through the trees. So let me go to the other session again. And I don't think I had one in this session because it was so overcast. But for example, say that I wanted to add some sun. I'll go to this picture right here. Say that I wanted to add a sun flare in this little patch in the trees. I can go to radial gradient. And a lot of these have shortcuts that I think most of them are the letter M or the up key with the M, but you can all, you can view them all right here. Um, you just drag and select, say that I wanted it to be coming out of the trees. Maybe I want to increase the temperature or the exposure. Say that maybe I wanted it a little bit wider with the radius being a little bit smaller. So anything like that. Um, I don't do it a ton. And usually if I'm doing it, I'm enhancing something that's already there. In this case, there is no sun there, so it kind of looks fake. Um, it just makes it look like the trees are really bright. But you can see, I can drag it anywhere I want. So maybe the sun was actually over here. Um, all of those things. Another one is color range. So I can select anywhere to like get a, a sample color. So maybe I want to get this really dark green right here and I can increase or decrease. So say that I just want this one specific area right here and I want to brighten that color or I want to bring the highlights down or increase or I want to change the saturation. So you can see it's a very minor adjustments. Maybe I want to make it more green or pull it more, more pink. Maybe I want to reduce the shadows. So, and you can notice too, as I'm zooming in, sometimes these minor adjustments really add some funky texture to your pictures. Um, so just be aware if you're doing that of what is actually happening behind the scenes. Another um, helpful thing for this is to say that um, with just the way that I edited my pictures, dad's pants aren't quite as blue as they should be. So let's go look at the original. So, so I could go back here and just select his pants, which you can see as I'm, as I'm making it more refined, it's just selecting the pants. Maybe I want to make them a little bit darker. You know, I could do anything like that with the color refine tool. Same with luminance. Say that something is a little too bright. So like this one spot on his shirt is really highlighted. I can just select the over highlighted spots and decrease them or decrease the highlight. Again, if I do too much or too little, it starts to look funky. So these are all really like super minor adjustments. They're not anything that I would go like crazy on. Um, but yeah, so that's how you would use the luminance range. Um, depth range is another one, but I don't have it on. Um, I specifically use this anytime that I need to select a subject. Like if I've got a newborn session and um, I'll go back to this one. And let's say that, let's 
loading. Let's say that I wanted to just select the background and I wanted to decrease the, um, the saturation or I wanted to increase the, how bright it was or I wanted to reduce the clarity or the texture because I've got some wrinkles that I need to, to get out or I wanna dehaze. Again, too much is too much. You can make minor adjustments and it still make a difference without going too crazy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. I'm gonna be adding new videos to this mini series every week. So come back next week and see what else we're gonna dive into talking about. Make sure that you like, subscribe, share, all of those things. Um, send this to your photographer friends or those that you know that are getting into photography that might need some more help with editing. If you have any suggestions of tools that you'd like, you would like me to dive into a little bit deeper, also leave that below in the comments so that I can add some more to um, this mini series. So I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.